Pixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The airbag. We're gonna be late. We'll make it. Whoa! Oh, wow. Hey, slow down there. <laughs> I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> Well, well, Fire. Again, risking your life. <laughs> and super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, Fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. <laughs> Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection. Like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah, but how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag, and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, Make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! He needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid. As you fixies say, Today's lesson is done. Hooray! Come on! 
Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design to use there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so... Caution and care make accidents rare. <laughs> some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down, Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk, the aquarium has a tube that's leaking, so go and play. I have to get a pack of mat. Oh, oh, oh. I wish I could play tag. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack of mat. Uh-huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's cause it's... Let's fix everything before Simka, with your pack of mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack of mat. Mm, but it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all of the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium! Hop on! <laughs> well, where's that leaky tube? Here! It's leaking at the joint! Yeah, this tube is gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat. Sure! And here's a souvenir. They're all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> Modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. <laughs> ah, it's exploding! <laughs> what in the world is happening here? Flooding water. You just do as I tell you. 
without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The elevator. is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with them, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there... Hooray! We can go! Wait a second. I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simkanolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention, please, on the high wire. Our very own aerial gymnasts. Hey! Yep. Hoop -ah. 
Our next act, feats of strength. Uh, it won't come out. Uh. I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting onto an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you? Uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The armor. Two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? <gasps> Who is that? Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you going to look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. 
by the way, the knight's horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Because I can't. Don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see. <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Great, Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Ooh, thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the knight back together. Uh-huh, before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battle. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? Nolik went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> Please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't.